Hi, I'm Paul Duchesne. Welcome to Mama Paul in the Kitchen. It's a Tuesday, February 9th, 2021, and what we're going to make today is a mushroom Swiss chard side dish that I uh, make with uh, turmeric and uh, little pine nuts in there. Now, the first thing we're going to do is get the water going, and then we'll talk about the ingredients that we put in there. So, get the I just turned the pot of water on over here. So I have boiling water coming up over here. And I'm going to turn a really, really, really low flame on underneath the uh, frying pan. Real low frying pan. So I just want to get that really warmed up when I'm ready to go with it. So, like I said, we're going to do uh, the mushroom dish with the uh, Swiss chard. Now, just to review for a second, when I started this series, I started to talk about the different uh, dietary regimens and I was talking about food combining and orovetics and macrobiotics and the Mediterranean diet. And pretty much I've mashed all these things together to make something that works for me. And I try to make it work for as many people around me that I cook for as possible. So mushrooms themselves, medicinal mushrooms especially, are a real superfood. Uh, and I'm always trying to get food, superfoods, especially into my dietary regimen. This was an old book, uh, Food is Your Best Medicine by, uh, by Beeler, uh, Dr. Beeler, Henry Beeler. And this was a popular book when this whole health food movement got started and the emphasis being on eating the right kind of dietary regimen and avoiding the uh, pharmaceutical prescriptions. So I try to sort of do that in a way. Now, I'm not going to put food into my diet that I don't like the taste of unless I can make it taste good. Now, mushrooms in general, I've never been terribly um, thrilled about. I'll eat the, uh, the little button mushrooms with the, uh, as an appetizer, but never, not the medicinal mushrooms or the shiitakes, and I just haven't been that crazy about them. So about a year or so ago, I started to really get into mushrooms. I was finding out all these medicinal benefits from them. And I wanted to um, sort of integrate them into my diet more. So I started messing around with different kinds of drinks and different types of uh, uh, sautés and things. And eventually, I hit upon uh, what I've got here today, which is what I call my mushroom Swiss chard dish. So what I bought today was uh, a chef's sampler of mushrooms. And these are various mushrooms in here. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, it looks like it's trumpet mushrooms in here. And there's another couple of names for these that are it's a little bit obscure when you start to look at them, figuring them out. But uh, piapinis and uh, trumpet mushrooms. Uh, they could be uh, a nameco. I'm not even sure what a couple of these are. Now, this is a sampler. And there's always two or three or four different kinds of mushrooms in here. And they usually put what they call a clamshell and a trumpet. And depending on how brown or bright it is, it'll get an upgrade in the name. So it'll be a royal trumpet or a uh, brown clamshell or an alba clamshell. And you'll start to look at all these different mushrooms and they really uh, get very interesting. In general, the mushrooms are literally like almost a magic food. And let me... Uh, well, let's, let's just put it up on the screen here for a minute. We've got the uh, headline that was in the paper the other day. So I was going to uh, do this show a couple of weeks ago, and I put off doing the show a couple of weeks ago, and I put it off till this weekend. And surprisingly, and this was really surprising, the uh, Mushrooms Are Magic headline is in the style section of the New York Times. They, uh, they, had, they opened up with a story over here, and then they went on to uh, page two in the article, and they showed uh, a half a dozen, or four actually, not a half a dozen, four. They showed four different mushrooms over here. Uh, the ones I think on the far left look like they are uh, little either trumpet mushrooms or earth tongs or possibly puff balls. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure what either of these are, but I'm going to use them. They're medicinal mushrooms, and I don't get real hung up with the exact specificities of all these different types of mushrooms. And when you start to look into the uh, medicinal benefits of them, 
Some of them are good for the heart, some of them are good for the spleen, some of them are good for digestion, some of them are good for energy, some of them are good for your sex life. Rather than picking out one little one here, one little one there, or taking a supplement with this, a supplement that, every week I make a different saute and I use a different group of mushrooms almost every week. So last week I used uh, portobellos and a few shiitakes. Uh, the week before I made it with maybe some oyster mushrooms. So I mixed them up. I try to mix them up, get a, a mix of different colors, different textures into the whole dish. So like I said, we're going to start with the mushrooms and we might as well get started with this and to get the saute going. And I sharpened these a little bit earlier, so they shouldn't be a big problem here today. The uh, interesting thing about the mushrooms is mushrooms not only are are edibly uh, interesting, they're also uh, a major source for cleaning up pollution on the planet. Uh, if you have any interest in some of the side benefits of the mushrooms, check out uh, Paul Stamus's uh, famous um, movie that was made, Paul Stamets, S-T-A-M-E-T-S. -E if you go onto YouTube, you'll find uh, Mycology and Mushrooms as Medicine. And it's a 50 minute uh, video that he's put together and he's showing the medicinal uses of the mushrooms and how they grow and the largest you know, mushroom uh, in, the, in the world up in, uh, up in Oregon. And they're showing mushrooms uh, cleaning up toxic waste and all sorts of stuff. Mushrooms are not in the animal kingdom and they're not in the plant kingdom. They are a kingdom all their own in between the two. And many times, like a lot of things in nature, they sort of act with a consciousness. And during one of the last uh, destructions of the planet, one of the four great destructions, it was the mushrooms that brought the planet back into uh, the state we're in today. So anyway, we've got the mushrooms over here. We're also going to use the Swiss chard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to saute the mushrooms, I'm going to parboil the Swiss chard, wring it out, and add it to the mushroom dish. Then we're going to put in some uh, turmeric. Turmeric. I've got fresh turmeric. It looks a little bit like ginseng, only it's real yellow. And I'm going to finish it up with some pine nuts. Also going to use a little black pepper. The turmeric without the pepper is not as bioactive. So you want to always... When you're cooking with uh, turmeric, always add a little bit of black pepper. It complements it and makes it more bioavailable. So, the mushrooms and then the Swiss chard. So let's move the, uh, over here. We got the chopping block. And what they like to recommend is when you're dealing with the mushrooms is to get the, you'll see they, See, they're growing on either like sawdust or some wood shavings or something to this effect. They grow in the dark, usually on these poles. And in fact, uh, let's, well, let's go over here. Let's get rid of that picture. And we can put up another shot of the, uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so this is a, 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 a batch of mushrooms being moved into a storage room over here or taken out of the storage room. Uh, looks like he's going in. I'm not positive. And the side headline, you'll notice, talks about the uh, ability of the mushrooms to take the decaying part of, of nature and transform it, which is a really, <laughs> it's a magical part of the mushroom, let's face it, totally magical. Okay, so we got the mushroom. I'm going to take the, we'll get a full screen here too, let's get a bigger screen. We're going to get the very ends of the mushroom off and I'm going to use my chef's knife because it has a sharp point on it as opposed to my vegetable knife. So we're just going to get the little ends off and I'm not always real anal about doing this kind of thing but uh, for the purpose of the uh, not to shock anybody by leaving those little stems on I'll get I'll get rid of them here right off the bat. So that's where the mushroom is growing in the like I said, either in the uh, sawdust or uh, wood shavings, uh, uh, mushrooms grow in the, if you go in the forest, they grow on trees. Most mushrooms are not psychedelic. Most mushrooms are edible. Uh, I am not a good mushroom person in figuring out which ones are edible or not. I started to study this a little while ago and uh, I reached the point where I stopped. And so this is what I've got. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna dice this all up. I'm gonna put this in the, uh, the saute pan. So I'm going to start with the big, looks like the big trumpets to me. 
and I'm going to go back to my vegetable knife here and we'll get the biggest ones out of the way first and then we'll deal with the small and any uh, you'll notice uh, I am not a chef I may have a chef's jacket on uh, but that's like watching a, an ad on TV where the guy's got a doctor jacket on uh, I inherited this from my uh, real chef friend of mine Martin who worked with me on uh, the Twinkie project that I've mentioned once or twice so we're going to dice these up and I'm not I just want them to be on the bite size uh, style here now I got a little frying pan got started already I already put the heat going so when I cook the mushroom generally what I do is I use sort of half water and, or half butter and half uh, of the oil that I use. And the oil I use, and I've shown you this before, is a combination of coconut and sesame oil, 50-50. And I keep it in a dark container. And I keep it on the stove, which the pilot light keeps the temperature a little bit high. It doesn't, de uh, doesn't uh, destroy the nutritional value in the, in the oil too much, but the coconut oil will solidify, especially in these kind of cold temperatures so I keep it on the stove on the back and we're going to put in a couple of tablespoons put the oil down and we'll get the saute going mushrooms really cook up small there's a tremendous amount of moisture in them obviously and they get really small at the end of the day so it's going to look like this frying pan is packed when I start with but at the end of the day it will be about probably 25% of the volume that's in there right now. Okay. So it stems and the and, and the, uh, the little caps on the top. We have everything here. Alrighty. So let's get this into the frying pan. This frying pan I used, this was from a restaurant supply house. I probably got this about really a long time ago and it is a workhorse it's an absolute workhorse i've probably had this probably over 30 years and uh, it never fails me honest to god it never fails me all right so we got that going and i use a uh, a pampered chef spatula which they work really good because they uh they don't melt in the heat which is always a good thing that they don't melt in the heat we got a real low light under here, and we started the boiling water. Well, the water's boiling. Boom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off the stove. I'm going to bring it over here, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to dip the swish jar into the. Let me do it over here so you can see better. So for par boiling for me, what I do is I dip the Swiss chard of the green. I showed you a different green last week, uh, and it was a. Uh, it sort of tasted. It was sort of a white kale that had almost more of a cabbagey kind of uh, flavor to it when you were done with it. So I just put the Swiss chard into the boiling water for not too long, maybe. Well, you can see how long. Maybe about 15 seconds, 20 seconds, maybe a half minute at the most. We'll dump the water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let the uh, Swiss chard sit here for a minute just while it cools and then I'll get back to it. The other interesting ingredient that we're using is the turmeric. And turmeric right here, and like I said, um, it looks a lot like a uh, ginseng and it's the root of a flowering plant. It's used in India quite a bit and they use it uh, also as a dye which is obvious from the fact that uh, I have a little uh, grater, porcelain grater that I use and I just use the grater for the turmeric. I don't use it for anything else. The reason is, it's all yellow. The turmeric is literally causing this to change color. It's causing it to die. When I use this, it's going to get on my hands. I'm going to have to clean it off. And if you're not careful, it'll get on anything that you're uh, dealing with around you. So let's give a little stir over here. You can see over here, we're it's already reducing quite a bit. Let's put it on that side of the stove, closer to where we are. 
I have probably this stove is so this stove is pretty interesting. It's uh it's so old it actually has a uh, a section here to start a little wood fire in to keep the house warm. How's that for an old stove? Okay, what I'm gonna say about the turmeric is is it medicinally terrific for you? There's a lot of literature out there that says that cumin is really good for you. That it's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, that it's good for arthritis, that it's good for, you know, half a dozen things. When you start to look into it, uh, you find one page that says that, and you find another page saying that there's no scientific uh, evidence to show that turmeric has any uh, nutritional value. Well. We know that it's loaded with about 34 essential oils, so at the very least. I like it. I've been using a fresh whole turmeric in cooking regularly. I use powdered turmeric in my salad mix. Uh, it feels to me like it's a really good addition to my uh, dietary regimen, so I use it a lot if, if I can. I'm not, I'm not making any claims for it. And if you're interested in it, you should sort of research it yourself. But the big thing is, how does it feel for you? It's the same thing with the mushrooms. Uh, there's an amazing book here about the mushrooms. Uh, let me pull. Oh. Mushrooms Demystified. Mushrooms Demystified. And that's, uh, let me go over there. And this is a 600-page uh, compendium of everything you ever wanted to know about mushrooms. And there are pages and pages explaining how they grow, uh, the medicinal values, the nutritional values, how to separate the uh, good ones from the bad ones, all this stuff. And so if you want to know anything, that's the book. And if you really want to just hear it, like I said before, uh, Paul uh, Stamets is the one who has the uh, video on YouTube. So let's give another little stir over here. When I do this dish, I like to get the mushrooms cooked down to a reasonable reduction. Keep that light low. Before I uh, finish the dish, because at the end of the day, I'm going to save most of this dish and eat it another time. So I don't want to overcook it at first. All right, so I've let this sit here for a minute and it's drained out a little bit. I'm going to get rid of the stem. And then the way I deal with the Swiss chard or a kale that I parboiled or any of these green vegetables. I basically slice them on down longitudinally three or four or five times. We're trying to make as small bite-sized kinds of pieces. You don't want big long strands of a green vegetable getting caught in your throat or anything like that. So we'll longitudinally and then we'll go horizontally and we have hand to get a little bit wet. Let's get a towel here. Okay, I was getting a little bit, my hands were getting a little bit too wet and they were slipping on the knife, and that's not good. You want to make sure your hands are dry when you're on the handle of your knife. If you don't want to slip with the knife and cut your finger or something, it's not good. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Swiss chard is diced up. We will now put it in my, trying to get as much of this here, and I'm going to wring it out. I'm going to wring it out and make a slightly drier ball out of the whole thing. Let's get the, the end of it over here. Get everything up. And a little squeeze. Okay. So I got my Swiss chard is ready to go into the pot and get the hands again. So let's take a look at the frying pan and see where we stand at the moment. Okay, we're, we're really good. So you can see what it's reduced down to. When we started here, we were, you know, big fluffy all over the side of the pan here. And now we're down to about half of where we started, which is nice. Very nice. So the two things we're going to put in are the Swiss chard, the turmeric, the pepper, and the pine nuts. And I'm going to do the turmeric next. And the reason I'm going to do the turmeric next is I'm going to grate it in 
and it'll be easier to grate in and get it dispersed throughout the whole mixture if I put it right on top of the mushrooms rather than on the Swiss chard. So I'm going to get with a little grater and grate away. Now usually what I do is, and you're going to ask me how much uh, to taste, to look, to whatever feels right. I am not a terribly uh, big uh, follower of recipes and when I create things on my own I just sort of go by uh, touch. If you go into most kitchens you'll find out that most cooks in most kitchens uh, how are they checking whether the meat's done or well done or not well done? They're putting their finger in it. It's all a matter of touch. So most of your cooking from my perspective is more about how does it look, how does it taste, Okay, now if this gets really loaded up, sometimes it does. I might sort of rinse it off a little bit like so. And then I will put this into water in the sink so as not to uh, get it mixed up with other foods, which I sometimes have had a habit of doing and causing consternation with the wife in the kitchen. Okay, so I got this all squeezed out and I'm going to sprinkle it over you know I just violated what I said I was going to put the Swiss char the uh, turmeric in so I could mix it around in the uh, mushrooms and then I went back to the screen and didn't do it all right turn the flame up on that a little bit and where are we Last, get the last drops out of here. Okay, so we got the turmeric, everything. We don't have the pepper in yet. Have a nice little pepper, but you always want to use fresh black pepper. You want to crush it. I said this before. If the pepper is sitting in a pepper shaker and it was ground two months ago, two years ago, it's nutritionally zero. It's actually acts as an irritant. But when you freshly ground pepper, it heals the irritation that was caused by the irritating pepper. So when you use it fresh, it's, uh, the oils are coming out of it. It's uh, nutritionally significant to say the least. Last but not least, pine nuts. When you use pine nuts, I buy this at my favorite health food store downtown. Do not buy pine nuts from China. They are garbage with a capital G. If you go out and you look at the uh, oh, $15 a pound pine nuts from Oregon and the $9 a pound pine nuts from China, you can see why they're $9 a pound. They're bloody rancid to start with. They almost have a little brown texture to them because they're so old. Don't trust most of your food products coming out of China. How much am I going to put in? I'm going to sprinkle in a light amount. That looks good. And that's pretty much the dish. I'm going to put this aside, the knife aside. We're going to stir it up. In fact, I'm going to take it off the stove right now and just bring it right over here and stir it up in front of you so we can see what's going on here. The uh, cumin has a uh, turmeric, has a uh, Got a slightly peppery kind of a little bit of a flavor to it, uh, which I like. It adds, it adds a lot to a dish. I find it adds quite a bit to a dish. I don't use a lot of herbs when I'm cooking, uh, but uh, I really like the turmeric. So that's it. That's my finished product. So what I'm going to do with this now, I could have it as a straight dish. In the, I, could I could have half of this as a dinner with uh, some squash on the side or something. What I'm gonna, what I usually do is the salad that I make. I generally put this on the side of the plate. So it depends on what my dinner is. Uh, it may be an addition to my salad, or it might be a side dish. But I sort of undercooked it a little bit. Literally, I didn't want to overcook it. Uh, everything is in there. As you can see, it's not overcooked. The mushrooms are still bright. They're coated with a nice little layer of uh, butter and uh, oil. Uh, the Swiss chard isn't 
overly it'll start to get a little browner when it starts to uh, get overcooked stove is off all right so here we go I got my dish I put it away for the week cover this up put it in the refrigerator I'm gonna fix a salad tonight I'll put the salad on the plate and I might add maybe two or three tablespoons of this for me it's a superfood and it tastes good and it, it's, it's an amazing compliment to a lot of dishes so that was it magical mushrooms with uh, Swiss chard turmeric pine nuts and a little uh, ground pepper peace patience persistence and uh, we'll try to do this again next week alrighty thank you for joining me